IIT Kharagpur, in its endeavor to open new vistas of challenges in engineering discipline, has now taken on life sciences. Life sciences, as you know, produces signals which are much more complicated than the signals produced by any engineering designed um, uh, component, element, or even aircrafts or any other thing. The human being is so complex that most of its organs and bodies provide signals. Now looking at it from an engineering angle provides completely new ways of looking at diseases and its diagnosis. In order to do that, IIT Kharagpur has set up this new venture of interdisciplinary research called Signals and Systems in Life Science, where we look at life science from the point of view of engineering. And we completely use doctors and collaborate with them on a very close basis to work out what new things we can define. Among them, this lung sound analysis that we have now come up with, with Professor Parthasarathy Bhattacharya and Professor Gautam Saha, is a unique achievement from our side. It is a, a new way of looking at diseases. It's a new way of looking at signals. We are now looking at lung sounds, we are now compiling the sounds, and we are now able to even provide information to doctors which help them diagnose diseases. So next time when you see a Facebook picture where people say, is it X, Y, Z? Now for a doctor, we will take a lung sound on a picture and we will ask him, is it respi this respiratory disease, is it COPD? And I think the doctors will be very happy. Thank you. See the difference between the two hands. This is the hand of Gito Sridi and this is the hand of her husband. This instrument is pulse oximeter. The lower panel records the pulse rate, which is 120 per minute, and the upper panel saturation, 78 per minute. Let me put it here. Let me keep your hand like this. See the fingertips, they are slightly globular. And see, for husband, for her husband, the pulse is 88 per minute, saturation is 96 percent. So distinctly, Gita Sridi has a lower saturation, and this is because of a disease called ILD. Uh, we are recording this uh, for a press conference. I hope you don't have any no, objection no. to it. Okay, fine. So let us look at an X-ray. It would have been better if I uh, could show you a normal X-ray, but here it's very obvious. The lung fields are usually black because they contain air, but it is uh, fairly white. A lot of streaking markings are there. These are characteristics of a disease called interstitial lung disease. This disease is not very uncommon, and perhaps the prevalence is growing. And in lot many circumstances, uh, in our country in particular, to our experience, people turn up um, in taking anti-tubercular medications for no reason. The main problem of the disease is shortness of breath. So what we thought that uh, the diagnosis of the disease is a bit difficult, although you can suspect the disease easily. Um, diagnosis includes um, a lot of investigations, including high resolution CT scan, chest, a lot of blood tests, bronchoscopy that she has undergone. And uh, this disease has got a lot of complications as well. Coming to the business, uh, we feel that uh, the uh, diagnosis and understanding of the disease can be made simpler if we can do something extra to what is existing. Normally what we do, we take, listen to the patient, then we look at the patient, examine the patient and in the examination of the patient there is a very very important part called auscultation and the auscultation was forwarded by this gentleman named Rene Theophil Hyacinth Lenek. In 1816, he invented the instrument called stethoscope, and which has become an integrated part of the identity of a doctor today. Through the stethoscope, we listen to the sounds, we try to 
make a rational interpretation based on our subjective impression and experience and knowledge and then we go forward to investigate a patient. We thought that we will make an objective assessment of the lung sound with the computer technology and that started the work we chose we had chosen two groups of patient uh, two groups of people one normal another patients of DPLD we collected their lung sounds and we analyzed those sounds that part will be taken care of by my colleague Dr. Gautam Shah of IIT Kharagpur Finally, we could uh, diagnose the digital signature of individual sounds. Means the digital signature of the normal sound and the digital signature of abnormal sound from the patient's chest, that is the patient's of IND. And once we got those sounds, we have, we have tried to give, and those digital signatures were specific, found to be specific. We have given them a pictorial shape this is a pictorial shape for normal and this is a pictorial shape for abnormal sound or sounds from the DPLD patients. You can see the shape of this uh, picture and the shape of this picture, the distribution different colors and especially the bar, um, especially the line in the bar where the blue part is above and here the blue part is far below. We had given these pictures to a set of normal, I mean lay persons and doctors and with 100% accuracy they could identify the normal and abnormal. This means that if we further transform the pictures into the shape of animals, the normal picture may be transformed to a shape of cow and the abnormal picture can be transformed to a shape of tiger. So if in a remote village today somebody is suffering from shortness of breath and if the system just allows someone to place an instrument on his chest and just transform the data remotely and if the data comes as a picture, anybody can understand the gentleman or the patient may have a disease and that disease is ILD. The job looks very simple, but it is not that because there is a question of differential diagnosis. We have chosen just one disease, but I would say this is the beginning. There is a lot, long way to go and the horizon is open for us. But and this is uh, luckily been published in a good journal and I would quote from the editor's comment there's a special editorial comment uh, for in this issue of the journal this is respirology and I will specifically focus in this area where the editor has written given the above why the excitement why should the paper even be published let alone the topic of an editorial the answer lies in the word novel the study is novel in more than one way. 
It is novel in the aspects of sound that were chosen for analysis. It is novel, at least for us as physicians, in its visual representations of the sound. The struggle to convert sound into images could be considered as Herculean as the struggle to convert language into the written form, and the authors have presented an interpretable pictorial display of the data. I believe they have very aptly described the importance of these small innovations. It's like uh, when the human being started writing, expressing the verbal language into written language. It's not applicable to just lung sound. I hope that tomorrow we'll be able to analyze all the sounds generated in our body uh, and represent them in specific pictorial form. And that will give a very quick interpretation of the abnormality going inside. That will in fact uh, open a new horizon of understanding diseases much more easily than what we are doing today. So, thanks. We I thank all these um, people in the August audience who have been lucky that the editor has decided to uh, publish our picture in this uh, particular issue of the journal with a note about our small invention. And uh, we hope that with all your blessings, we can do better in future.